Yes, good morning dear candidates and everyone watching BBS Telefine at this time. Program Somera Mudirolio. It is SST with me, Mr. Namonyo Cyrus from Gwanya Preparatory School, Kaboja. Today is the 15th day of September 2020. It is a long time since we were sent home for holiday because of COVID-19. And you can see that we, all, we are always experiencing fluctuating hopes. Uh, each time we are promised of going back to school. But as the days approach, you really see there is no clear sign of going back to school. But hopefully, time will come when you shall go back to school. I know COVID may not mark the end of it all. At least time is going to come when, when we shall be going back to school. Uh, in the past few lessons, we have been looking at foreign influence. And we are, still, uh, we are still continuing the foreign influence. I think in the past two lessons, we are talking about explorers in East Africa. And this time, we are continuing with the, with the subtopic explorers. But I want us to look at explorers in other regions of Africa, particularly West Africa and South Africa. We said uh, for a very long time, the Europeans didn't have any information about the African continent, particularly the interior. They would always come to Africa but they would stop at the coast. So they used to refer to Africa as a darker continent because they didn't have any information. They lacked information about Africa's interior. But time came when they sent different explorers. The different Europeans were sent to Africa to come and collect information about the interior. And these explorers who came to collect information about the interior were the explorers. We defined who an explorer is, and we say that an explorer is a person who leaves his home country and goes to another, mainly to find out more information about that, that new area. So we had very many Europeans who came to Africa. We have looked at those ones who came to East Africa, like John Speak, Henry Morton Stanley, Dr. David Livingstone, and many others. Many of them just came to collect other information and find out about the people of Africa. Some of them came to East Africa to look for the source of, of River Nile, which they didn't know where it was coming from. So today, I want us to look at explorers who came to West Africa and their contributions. Explorers, examples of explorers in West Africa. So this time I want us to look at the examples of explorers in West Africa. So among them, we had Mungo Park. In most cases, we refer to him as Dr. Mungo Park. There was Richard Lander. There was also Hagi Kilapaton. Hagi Kilapaton. Very unfortunate. Kilapaton was written beginning with a small c, but it should be capital C because it is a proper noun, a name of a person. There was also Reni Kaili, Johnny Landa, Heinrich Bath, Dixon Denham, and Gaspar de Molay. There were very many explorers in West Africa, but we shall only talk about a few of them. And those are some of the examples of explorers who came to West Africa. And unfortunately, in the whole of Africa, I think most of the explorers who came to Africa, particularly those who came to West Africa, they died from there. They lost their lives from West Africa. And that's why most of the historians, more especially the modern historians, they refer to West Africa as the white man's grave. Because most of the explorers who came to West Africa, they were either killed by the natives or they died because of the tropical diseases there. So because most of them didn't survive, they died from there. Modern historians normally refer to West Africa as the white man's grave. 
So those are some of the examples of explorers who came to West Africa. And I want us to look at one by one, beginning with Mungo Park. And I said Mungo Park is in most cases referred to as Dr. Mungo Park because he was a doctor by profession. So next you are going to see the picture. That's the picture of Dr. Mungo Park. That's what he looked like. And then next we are looking at, we are going to see his exploration journey. For him, he mainly came to collect information about the river Niger. I think you can see the river Niger there. And the journey of Dr. Mungo Park, represented with arrows in red color. That was the journey that was followed by Dr. Mungo Park in West Africa. So in most cases, they will just draw for your map. If you are in P7, they will draw for your map. And maybe they will indicate that, that, that route. And they will maybe label it with a letter or a number or a, or a figure. And they will ask you to identify the explorer who used that route. So that route was used by Dr. Mungo Park. So Dr. Mungo Park, like we have already said, that for him he was a professional doctor. He was a medical doctor from Scotland. Scotland is a state in the UK. So when you read certain books, they always refer to him as a Scottish doctor. Why do they call him a Scottish doctor? It is because he was a doctor and he was coming from Scotland. So people who come from Scotland, we call them Scottish. So we are saying Dr. Mungo Park, he was a doctor and he came from Scotland in the UK. By then it was Britain. He was sent to, uh, he was sent to Africa by the African Association in 1795. So the Europeans, like we said earlier, that the Europeans developed a lot of interest in getting information from Africa, but they didn't know about it. So what they did, they had to send different explorers to Africa to come and collect information about Africa's interior. So in 1778, they formed the African Association and the, pro the purpose of forming the African Association was to send explorers to West Africa and collect information from the interior. So the African Association sent Dr. Mungo Park to West Africa to collect information about that region. About that region. So in most cases we are asked to name the organization which sent Dr. Mungo Park to Africa. That was the African association then some people are about to ask was it in africa no it was in britain but it was called it was called the african association because the purpose of its formation was to send explorers to africa to collect information about the continent so the reason for the coming of dr mungo park we are saying he was sent to follow the course of river niger and to find its mouth that's why you saw he did not begin from the mouth, but he was coming, he was following the course, in the direction in which the, 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 the river Niger was flowing. So his intention was to follow the course of river Niger, explore it up to its mouth. What most Europeans thought about the river Niger was that they thought that the river Niger was connected to the river Congo. And also they thought that river Gambia and river Senegal, they were two different distributaries of the river Niger. So they had to send Dr. Mungo Park to follow the course of river Niger and find its mouth. And another reason for his coming was to find the chances of trade in West Africa. And how could he find the chances of trade by, by, by looking at the behavior of the people in West Africa and also finding out the chances of trade on the river Niger. Unfortunately, he was not able to reach the mouth of river Niger. By the time he came to the interior of West Africa, 
there were some wars going on in West Africa. So the local wars within West Africa, they scared him from continuing. And besides that, the harsh climatic conditions also made his exploration work difficult. Because at that time it would rain so much. So his ex in fact, uh, history says most of his companions died. Most of the people with whom he moved, they died because of the harsh weather conditions and the tropical diseases. So his exploration work became difficult. And besides that, he ran short of the, uh, the basic things to use like medicine, food and water. So he went back. To, uh, he went back to Europe. Then he came back in 1805 for the second time. So Dr. Mungo Park made two journeys to Africa. That was 1795, where he explored, reached a time, and he was unable to continue. He went back. Then in 1805, he made the second journey. To Africa and on his second journey he still wanted to continue from where he had stopped to continue looking for the mouth of river Niger by following it is course and unfortunately he drowned at Busa Falls on river Niger Busa Falls are the waterfalls in, in, in Nigeria I think right now they are not there they were submerged they were covered when they were constructing the Kainji Dam. But Busa Falls were found on the river Niger in Nigeria. So they suggest that he was attacked by the, local, by, by the natives who made him drown at Busa Falls. However, other sources said no, his boat just hit a rock and it capsized. Then he drowned at Busa Falls. So sometimes we are asked to mention where Dr. Mungo Park died from. Dr. Mungo Park died at Busa Falls on River Niger. And how did he meet his death? He drowned. And I've said, I've already said what made him to drown. It is not clear. But some sources of history say that the local people attacked him, then they made him to drown. And other sources say his boat hit a rock and it capsized. Then he drowned at Busa Falls. But Mungo Parker's exploration, I think he was the earliest, he was the first explorer to explore the interior of West Africa. He was the first to explore the interior of West Africa. And the information he collected formed the basis for other explorers who later came to West Africa to continue with that work of exploration. Then the next explorer we are looking at is Gaspard Molaine. That's the picture of Gaspard Molaine. That's what he looked like. He was the first European to see the source of River Senegal. So when you get your atlas, look for the location of River Senegal. In West Africa. Just look for where the, that country Senegal is. Then you'll see where River Senegal is. So Gaspar de Moulin, we have said, he was the first European to see River Senegal. And we said, don't say he was the first person to see River Senegal. He can't be the he couldn't be the first person. Because the local people had already seen River Senegal. They had seen where River Senegal comes from. But no other European had reached where they saw where the source of River Senegal was. So we say Gaspar de Moulin was the first European to see the source of River Senegal. Don't say he was the first person, but he was the first European. Then the next one we are talking about uh, Major Gordon Lying. Like you can see him in the photographs. He was an army officer in the British Army. He was also sent to West Africa 
to collect information about that region. So that's why we are saying that, like we have already said, that that title of major was not just given to him. He was an army officer in the British Army. So he was sent to Africa as a British explorer. So we say he was a British explorer in West Africa. He became the first European to reach Timbuktu in Mali. Timbuktu is a town which is located in Mali. It's a very big town. It developed during the Trans-Saharan trade in West Africa. And up to now it is a very large town. So very many people had reached Timbuktu, but no European had reached there. So Major Gordon Lying was the first European to reach Timbuktu in Mali. And also he became the first European to reach the source of River Niger. Unfortunately, he was killed just shortly after he had left, after he had left Timbuktu. He was killed by the local people in West Africa. Like I told you earlier, many European explorers died from West Africa. And most of them died because they were attacked by the local people. Others died because of the harsh climatic conditions. Others died because of the tropical diseases. The number of Europeans who died from West Africa was far greater than any in any other region of Africa. And that's why in most cases, I, like I said earlier, West Africa is always referred to as the, the white man's grave. Just because most of many explorers died from West Africa. So we said Gordon Lying was the first European to reach Timbuktu in Mali. And also he was the first European to reach the source of river Niger. Then we look at other explorers. These two explorers were brothers. And that was John Lander and Richard Lander. So sometimes we just refer to them as the Landers. So whenever we talk about the Landers, we are referring to John Lander and Richard Lander. Both of them were brothers to each other. So, next you're going to see their pictures. When you look at them, they may even look alike. So, the first one, which is in your kind of white background, that is John Lander. And the other one in kind of green, green, sorry, green, brown, that is Richard Lander. So, those two explorers were brothers. John Lander was a brother to, Rich, to Richard Lander. So whenever we talk about the Landers in West Africa, we are referring to John Lander and Richard Lander. So these two explorers, for them, they were coming with, after the death, uh, that map you see, you can see that is River Niger. We said Mungo Park had explored it up to the Busa Falls where he drowned from. So after his death, the landers were sent to explore, to continue with the work of Dr. Mungo Park, of collecting information about the river Niger. So in most cases, we are asked to give a reason why John Lander and Richard Lander were sent to West Africa, or why the landers were sent to, to West Africa. The landers were sent to West Africa to complete the work of Dr. Mungo Park. So they wanted to collect information about the river Niger. Among the information they were to collect was about the possibilities of transport on the river Niger. Was the river Niger navigable? Could it be used for transport? And why do you think they so much wanted to collect information about Africa's rivers. It is because they wanted to use them for transport to the interior. So we are saying they wanted to collect information about the river Niger. 
mainly to find out whether the river Niger could be used for transport. So during their time of exploration in West Africa, they made reports on the possible chances of trade in West Africa. And among the reports they made, they said West Africa could be a very good place for growing oil palm. And so oil palm trade between Europe and West Africa would be a profitable one. Because for the Europeans wanted oil palm mainly to make cooking oil. Then also among the reports they made was that the population of West Africa was good enough to provide the market for the goods produced by the European industries and also raw materials for the industries in Europe. So John Landa and Richard Landa made reports on the possible chances of trade in West Africa. And why did they come to West Africa? They came to complete the work of Dr. Mungo Park. And how did they complete it? They collected information about the river Niger. They explored the river Niger up to its mouth in the Niger Delta. But they didn't become the first Europeans to reach the mouth of river Niger because other Europeans could have reached there. So basically, those are the explorers that we have talked about in details from West Africa. About other explorers, you can always get uh, P7 textbooks. Uh, we have uh, comprehensive social studies. It has very good information about that. So just check with the comprehensive, we'll go and look under foreign influence. You're going to read about those other explorers. Besides that, you can always search on the internet. Unfortunately, the internet will provide a lot of information that you may not be able to see. But comprehensive will do better. P7. Then we have ex examples of explorers in, West, uh, sorry, in, in Central Africa. Examples of explorers in Central Africa. So basically we have talked about those in West Africa. And this time I want us to talk about those in Central Africa. So in Central Africa, we had Heinrich Bath. We had Heinrich Bath, we had Dr. David Livingstone, and we had Henry Morton Stanley. For Dr. David Livingstone and Henry Morton Stanley, we may not talk about them again. Because we talked about them in East Africa. Unfortunately there we are typed West Africa instead of Central Africa. But straight away, let us now look at explorers in Central Africa, and we talk about Heinrich Bath. Like we said earlier, Heinrich Bath was an explorer in West Africa, but also he was an explorer in Central Africa. So for him, he explored East Afri sorry, Central Africa and West Africa. Like Dr. David Livingstone and Henry Morton Stanley were explorers in East Africa and also explorers in Central Africa. So let us look at Heinrich Bath. So the picture you're going to see next belongs to Heinrich Bath. That's the photograph of Heinrich Bath. The next you'll see on the screen. That's the photograph of Heinrich Bath. Heinrich Bath was a German, but in most cases he was working for Britain. And then you're going to see the exploration journey of Heinrich Bath. So that was the exploration journey of Heinrich Bath. He started his journey always from the north, mainly from Tripoli in Libya. And he would move across the Sahara Desert, moving southwards. Then he explored parts of, of, of Central Africa, more special around the Lake Chad, south of the Lake Chad. Then he also explored parts of West Africa. He went as far as Timbukutu in Mali. And he was among the most widely traveled explorers in, in, in Africa. So Heinrich Bath 
like we have already said, he was a German explorer, but sent to Africa by Britain, though he was a German, he was working for Britain instead of German. So he was sent to Africa by Britain in 1850. And like we have said earlier, he was an explorer in Central Africa and in West Africa. So Britain, or the British, sent Heinrich Bath to Africa, mainly to explore the resources of Africa, but also to sign treaties with African kings and chiefs in Central and West Africa. Though he didn't fulfill that one of signing treaties, instead when he reached it, he started doing a lot of other work. But he was sent by the British to explore and sign treaties with African kings and chiefs in Central and West Africa. And while he was carrying out his exploration work, he wrote reports about the people and the resources of West Africa. And this was very important to the European government, particularly the British government that had sent him to West and Central Africa. This report about the resources and the people of West Africa helped them to make plans of controlling the African territories, mainly to explore, as well to exploit the resources of Africa. And also he worked against slave trade. In Central Africa, he was never happy with the activities of slave trade and slavery. So he worked against the slave trade in Central Africa. Like Dr. David Livingstone also did. Like we said earlier, Dr. David Livingstone worked against the slave trade and also Heinrich Bath. So how did Heinrich Bath contribute to the coming of other, Euro other groups of Europeans like the administrators or the colonialists? He made reports about the people and resources of West Africa. So after looking at Heinrich Bath, and we have talked about the different explorers in Africa, this time I want us to look at reasons why explorers came to Africa. Reasons why explorers came to Africa. Why do you think, like we have already said, it was very risky for them to come to Africa. Coming to the interior, the transport was very poor. There were thick forests, but they were always interested in coming to the interior. Why was it, why was it so? One, they wanted to find areas of trade. When I say they wanted to find areas of trade, I mean they wanted to get areas that would provide the market for their industrial goods. At the same time, they wanted to get areas that would provide raw materials to their home industries. Because at that time, while well, in Africa we didn't have any industry, there were very many industries in Europe. And these industries were producing a lot of goods. At the same time, the industries needed raw materials, of which all those could be got somewhere here in Africa. So they had to send explorers, they had to send explorers to come to find areas of trade. And we said those areas of trade were going to provide raw materials for the home industries in Europe. And at the same time, they were going to provide the market for the goods produced by the industries in Europe. So if asked to give reasons, any one reason why explorers came to Africa, one, they wanted to find areas of trade. Also, they wanted to collect information about the resources of Africa. The resources of Africa included the climate, the fertile soils, and the people of Africa as well. Because by collecting this information about the resources of Africa, 
they would now know Africa has got the fertile soils, meaning it is good to go and establish plantations there. They come and establish their plantations. The climate of Africa is good. They come and start plantations. So that's why you say they wanted to collect information about the resources of Africa. They wanted to find areas where they would invest their capital. They had accumulated, they had got a lot of money. This money was from trade and this money was from industrialization. Yet, they didn't have areas of investment. To invest is to put money in a business which will bring profit. So they had got a lot of money and they didn't have where to put the money in order to, pro to, to make profits in Europe. So what they did, they came to Africa to get areas where they were going to invest this money and make profits. And how do they invest this money in Africa? By starting up plantations. Also by starting up different, different businesses in Africa to, to sell the manufactured goods from Europe. So we're saying they wanted to find areas of trade, they wanted to collect information about the resources of Africa and also they wanted to find areas where they would invest their capital. Another reason is that they wanted to find areas where they would spread their Christianity. At that time, like the Arabs were so much interested in is spreading Islam, the Europeans also had developed that too much love and interest to spread the Christianity. So they wanted to find those areas that where the where the European missionaries would go and spread Christianity. Because they believed Christianity was part of their civilization. They also wanted to become or they also wanted to find areas which would become their overseas colonies. Uh, there is what we call the rise of imperialism. Imperialism is that strong desire to control other areas. So the European countries had developed that, that desire to control other areas, to put different areas of the world under their control. And the more areas a European country controlled, the more powerful it was considered to be. So the European governments, like we have seen in Britain, uh, the, the British government, they had to send different they had to send different explorers to africa mainly to find those areas that would become the colonies of their of, of their of their home countries and also they wanted to gain prestige over fellow europeans huh? because each time they would come they would people uh, they would make reports and they would also be put in newspapers he went and explored Africa. When he went to Africa, he discovered this. That's now prestige. That's now pride. Huh? That's respect. They wanted to gain respect over fellow Europeans. Hmm? Someone who has even gone to Africa and made discoveries there would be respected so much and even be put in newspapers. So explorers wanted to, uh, to uh, explore, explorers came to Africa because they wanted to gain respect over fellow Europeans and also they wanted to find out about the physical features of Africa like we have seen Dr. Mungo Park in West Africa he was coming to collect information about the river Niger we saw John Speak, Richard Burton and James Grant then also Sir Samuel Baker they had come to East Africa to find the source of river Nile. That's why we say they wanted to find out about the physical features of Africa. So please, when they ask us to give reasons why European explorers came, don't say they wanted to get a market. No. For them, they were not coming with any, any items for sale that they wanted to get a market. Neither did they want to get raw materials but for them, they wanted to find areas that were going to provide raw materials for their home industries. 
they were going to f they were coming to find areas that would provide market for the goods produced by the home industries that's why we say they wanted to find areas of trade so those are some of the reasons why european explorers came and this time let us look at the problems first by explorers in africa like we have already seen explorers faced a lot of challenges when they came to africa they faced very many problems and among them the harsh weather conditions there are times when it would rain so much like we said earlier Dr. Mungo Park came in a company of very many other Europeans. But within just a period of less than five months, I think there were more than 70. But in a period of less than, say, of, of less than five months, more than 40 had died. Because they came at a time when it was raining so much, there are times when it would be so hot. Like imagine those who crossed through the Sahara Desert. So harsh weather conditions. And the time was not like now. That you would go in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hotel to rest. There were no hotels at that time. So one of the problems was harsh weather conditions. Another one was poor transport. The roads were poor. There were no clear routes, not even vehicles, there were no cars, there were no motorcycles. So they were moving on foot. Someone who moves like 500 miles on foot. Or even more. So there was poor transport. So someone is about to ask, but would they move on any stop? They would rest at times. They would even rest for some days. But of course they would continue. But walking on foot. Because of the poor transport. Also language difficulty. Sometimes we call it language barrier. Remember for them they were speaking their European languages. They didn't know the native, uh, they didn't know the African languages. And yet Africans also didn't know the European languages. So there was that problem of language barrier. Or we can always refer to it as a language difficulty. So there was, not, uh, there was not enough communication between them and the Africans because of the language problem. However, that one was solved. One some of these Europeans could stay in Africa and learn some native languages. Because we are told Heinrich Bath, he was able to speak at least more than five African languages fluently. We talked about Johann, sorry, Ludwig Graf. He, he, he learned Swahili. He reached an extent of even making a dictionary in Swahili. So they learned some of the native languages. Also, they used the interpreters. They would get some people who would speak the local languages. And they speak for them. They act as interpreters. So another problem was tropical diseases. The problem was not epidemic diseases, but the problem was tropical diseases. Tropical diseases are only those diseases found in the tropics. Those European countries are in temperate regions, so they don't have certain diseases like malaria. They don't have diseases like sleeping sickness. Because the mosquitoes that spread malaria are not found in those European countries, so they don't have malaria. The sesophilites that, that spread sleeping sickness are not found in temperate regions like in Europe. They're only in Africa. So when they came here in Africa, they started now suffering from such diseases. And many of them died because of such. Malaria killed very many. So they faced a problem of tropical diseases. 
attacks from hostile tribes. The hostile tribes were attacking them. Like we remember we talked about the Nandi and the Maasai in Kenya. They were always very hostile to the foreigners who would pass through their land. So sometimes we are asked to give away how, how, how the hostile tribes or how the Nandi and the Maasai were a problem to the European explorers or to the early foreigners. They attacked the foreigners who passed through their land. They would attack them. They were hostile to them. So lack of food and water in some places. These people, they would at times lack water and food. Sometimes what they would move, what they moved with was not enough. So they reach somewhere and they lack what to eat. First of all, they didn't have their own food in Africa. And they were not used to these local foods in Africa. So they reach somewhere and they lack what to eat. So lack of food. Sometimes they would even lack a medicine. Their medicine they moved with could get finished. And they lack a medicine. And some Africans who acted as porters escaped with their property. Because they moved with some good property, like medicine, they would move with enough water for them to drink, they would move with enough food. Huh? And they get some Africans to help them as servants to carry that luggage. So as they are moving only to look behind, someone had already escaped with it. Even if you see him running away with it. So some Africans who acted as porters escaped with their property. So sometimes when asked to give problems faced by explorers in Africa, talk of the harsh weather conditions, poor transport, language difficulty, tropical diseases, attacks from hostile tribes, lack of food and water in some places. Some Africans who acted as porters escaped with their property. And also we have talked about lack of medicine. And also poor communication. Because there was no way they would communicate with their home governments. At that time there were no, 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 no phones like it is the case today. So poor communication was also another problem. The, the early explorers faced in Africa. Then we look at effects. The effects of European exploration in Africa. Effects, we mean the outcomes. What changes did they cause in Africa when they came? What changes took place because of their coming? When we don't call them effects, we call them results. Of course, when they came, they didn't leave Africa the same. Africa was not left the same. They caused some changes. And those changes that were caused by the European explorers is what we are referring to as effects of European exploration in Africa. Is what we refer to as effects of European exploration. If they don't ask you for the effects of European exploration, they'll ask, they'll ask you, give anyone way how the coming of explorers affected the African continent. Some of these effects were positive and others were negative. Among them, the physical features were given new names by the explorers. Of course, when they came, they found when this... When the physical features of Africa had got their local names, but then they started giving them new names. Like we talked about Lake Victoria. For us here we were calling it Nyanja Narubari. For them when they came, they called it Lake Victoria. Narubari simply means home of gods. Because the local people believed that all the gods that were ruling people were coming from the lake. And that was their home. So, when they came, they called it Lake Victoria. And who named it Lake Victoria? That was John Speak. 
We talked about Dr. David Livingstone. He named the Victoria Falls on River Zambez. It had its own local name. Sir Samuel Baker, he named Lake Arubat and the Maxon Falls. When Henry Morton Stanley came, he named Lake Edward and Lake George. So the physical features were given new names by explorers. What I don't know, whether that was a negative one or a positive one. Was it a good change or a, or a, or a bad one? That one is relative. It depends on the on one who is reasoning it. But I think it was a good one because we are, up to now we are still using those names. So one effect we are saying the, the physical features were given new names by the explorers. And two, they made Africa known to the rest of the world. There was very little interaction between Africa and other continents. But when explorers came, they started collecting information about the African continent and it is interior. So Africa became known to the rest of the world. Like you saw the, the Portuguese explorers when they came. That's how Africa was linked to Europe and to India. There was no interaction at all. So they made Africa known to the rest of the world. Some explorers worked against slave trade. Some explorers worked against slave trade. Dr. David Livingstone, remember, he made reports showing how bad slave trade was in Africa and even encouraged his home government to come and colonize Africa in order to end slave trade. So some explorers worked against slave trade. We talked about Dr. David Livingstone. We have talked about Heinrich Bath. They led to the coming of missionaries who spread Christianity. When explorers came, they went back and reported that there is no Christianity in Africa. They started inviting these missionaries to come. They started telling the people of Africa about the new religion, Christianity, and how good it was. And if you remember well, we said Henry Morton Stanley even wrote a letter inviting missionaries to come on behalf of Kabaka Mutesa I. So had they not been the explorers, then Christianity would have taken long to reach the African continent. But when explorers came, they collected information about the African continent, they went back and reported that there is no Christianity. Those people are worshipping idols. Then these people also came with their Christianity. So that's why we say they led to the coming of missionaries who spread Christianity. Also, some explorers were also missionaries. And they spread Christianity. Examples of such, we had Dr. David Livingstone. He was an explorer and also he was a missionary. So he helped in spreading Christianity. So sometimes we are asked to give away how explorers led to the spread of Christianity. Some of them were also explorers, some, some of them were also missionaries and they spread Christianity. Also, they led to the coming of colonialists. Remember, we have already said most of these explorers had been sent to Africa by their home governments to come and collect information about Africa's interior. So when they came, they went back and reported about the resources of Africa. And besides that, some of these explorers like Dr. David Livingstone encouraged his home government to come and colonize Africa in order to end slave trade. And uh, next we look at how explorers, as we're almost coming to the top of the hour, we look at how explorers led to the coming of colonialists. We look at how explorers led to the coming of colonialists in Africa. 
like we have already said, that explorers led to colonization of Africa. How did they lead, how did they lead to, African, to Africa's colonization? One, they reported about the resources of Africa, which attracted the colonialists. So when explorers came, they went back and reported. They said the African continent has got very fertile soils. There is enough land where we can grow crops. The people of Africa don't have governments, so we can go and rule them. They can even provide the market for our goods. All those reports attracted the European countries to come and colonize Africa such that they could control the resources of the African continent. So when asked of how explorers led to the coming of colonialists in Africa, they reported about the resources of Africa, which attracted the colonialists. Also, some explorers encouraged their home government to colonize Africa, so as to end slave trade. Remember we talked about Dr. David Livingstone, and we said Dr. David Livingstone encouraged his home government to colonize Africa, so as to end slave trade. And explorers started a good relationship with Africa, with African kings by giving them gifts. When these explorers came, they would give some gifts like guns to the African kings because these kings at times they were not so friendly. But when explorers came, they started giving them some gifts. So by giving them some gifts, they created that good relationship. They started knowing and believing that a European is not an enemy that a European is such a good person. So any other Europeans who came later were welcomed more, were accepted more easily because of the explorers who had already created a good relationship. So we have said explorers reported about the resources of Africa, which attracted the colonialists. Some explorers encouraged their home government to colonize Africa so as to end slave trade and explorers started a good relationship with African kings by giving them gifts. And I think that's enough about European explorers. In the next lesson, we shall mainly talk about the European missionaries. Why they came, how they came, and where they came from. So we have come to the top of the hour. Thank you very much for being part of this lesson uh, of SST and always making a very good decision of tuning in to BBS television. It has given us such a good program at a time when almost all of us are losing hope that schools may not open. But we are still waiting for the president to come back. He promised to come before September. But we shall not get tired of waiting for him. Let us still wait for him. He will come back very soon and he will give us a very big decision like he promised. We think he's still cooking it. He will give, us, he will give it to us very soon. Thank you for tuning in and please always tune in to BBS television, Telefine Yafe. Sawasajja Kabaka, Awangare. Mera mudiro lio, nge wagidua. Boso misezo mwana umasu meru kajanan schools. Omuli kampas ye bombo kalure, neye kabala gala. Jowa na buwela likirivubo na. Oluo msinjo kutambuzibu bia njigiriza. Nenso mayaba ize yomu lembe. Muma sumeru kafiga nogo na. Tuso misa arts and sciences. Oku vila dala kusinye soka. Oku tuka kusinye yomu kaga. Nga tuso misa haba nukuvila dala kumutendelu kwa kindagate. Oku tuka kuchibine chomu sampo. Tulina basomisa wakugumu kubangula habana. Nukuba teka teka. E